Tonight's video is a review of what we did last week, Tuesday and Thursday, which was basically provocations and encounters from Kodmuk Strata, Iron Gate, and introduction to Mother Kodmuka Alta using the left foot forward. So, as a recap of the Kodmuk Strata, which I only saw in one hand, uh, done it a few times. 1A, beat the sword, cut to the head. Our response to that is sword comes out of the way. Transition to face, they impale themselves on our point. 1B, if the defender does this too soon, that allows the agent to change the ankle attack to a rising cut from hip, drops the shoulder, another eight, followed by imbarcata. If we've made this mistake, we've gone too soon, we just keep moving, stepping back with the four. A reverse squatty pro. Second up, we have the beat thrust. Step around. So it's very similar to our defense, it's just we're going into it as much away from it. If someone has beat my sword to my, to my right, I'm going to step behind, snap cut with this false edge, and step back with step on So we're not necessarily hitting them, but we are preventing their attack from uh, going any further. We have our Punta Versa, two options. Threaten with the left foot, step across, cut, cut. We could also do this with the right foot. It's not as powerful, but it gets quicker because it's making much smaller, shorter steps. Or, if I still have a good position here, I can turn that into an imbrocata and thrust to the chest face right over there. As the person receiving, I extend as they step across, hit them in the chest with a thrust and entry. If I have maybe uh, not acted soon enough, not acted in the time, as I do this, I can just leave which will defend against either one of those attacks, whether it's this attack cut to my head or this thrust to my chest. Next up we have the thrust to the inside, stepping to the left. First time we see this action response is here. So we're going to come up to reverse head guard and step around, hitting the inside of the arm. Our last two are the Invitation to the outside. If they thrust with the to the high outside, I go to entry. If they go to cover something to the inside, so that little dipping pull to strike to my inside, you will use face guard and hit them. In response to this, I don't want to get in that game at all. So I'm just going to pull my leg back and we'll go from there. Finally, we can put the sword point the true edge of our sword on top of theirs, thrusting over it, and if they try their hand, we step around. As the person receiving, I can either take that immediately and cut to the inside of the wrist, or if they have started doing the punta reversa, I'll get to the outside of the wrist. Iron Gate, we have a few things we can do here, one being Beat, cut to the hand. This is, this is our pushing step, where the left pushes the right foot forward. As the person receiving this, I will let this happen and step back, hitting their hand. Option two is we are going to beat with the true edge, so number eight, thrust, cut, move along. So it's really important here that when I do this beat, that it is the hip to shoulder line and not belly button to head line, because you actually miss their sword, especially if they're standing guard correctly. So you want to ensure we hit that by taking that step and then thrust to the right side. In response to this, when the actual tech comes, that thrust, I'll do my basic Mezzo reverso defense. Stepping to that right, cutting up, thrusting underneath. 
to do punta de inertia, we have to first create some motion by transitioning to long tail. Step to their right and my left. And depending on what I feel here, I have one of three options. I can do the standard cut around the Matrito Tondo. I can, if they use their true edge to beat this, turn that into a Ridofio to the arm and an Imbrocato. Or I can do two thrusts. So as I beat and thrust, as this one comes back, I'm going to avoid that contact and thrust to the inside. So, so far we've only looked at one of these responses. We'll cover these in the next video. Is that when they have beat our sword and we made this Either we step or we not. I find it's a bit easier if I have made that small little step to get there. As they're coming around, place and slice the inside of the wrist. So same on the side. They beat our sword. We come up. They come around. Place. Slice through. And then the last one we haven't really looked at yet, but I'm going to show it, is we can gain the sword here as well meaning that I just put my sword on top and I thrust very similar to the one in Corno de Strata. And that is what we've done so far with the two right to forward guards. Let's switch over to long tail. With this, sorry, let's switch over to sword and dagger. Where we looked at Iron Gate both sides and we started looking at Corno de Alta. So Iron Gate, we have something, oh, I missed one provocation here. That being, I am going to faint as if I'm going to throw a Stratzone. As my partner goes to defend against that, I cut to the right thigh. So seen from the side, I give the look of throwing this, and that's kind of how I want to train this. I want to do a bunch of Stratzone so they can get, a, get into a habit. And once they start, they fall into that. That's when we go to the leg and cut up to the unicorn to make sure we're safe. So, sword and dagger, we're doing a very, very similar thing. But first up, our first action is we're going to beat. Instead of hitting the hand, I can actually afford to go for the face. Uh, I'm not taking the head off, I don't have nearly enough of velocity to do that but I will take parts of the face with me. So it's a nice cut through the face. If we are on the receiving end of this, we take this energy and do something very similar, cut to the hand. So we take it, trade, cut. Notice I'm going back on an angle and not going straight back. So facing their wrist, not their body. Second option is to do the feint. It starts exactly the same way. And this kind of helps actually because if they know, if they know the system, they'll know that when they come here, that means I'm gonna be doing something like a stramazo, like something high. So when they see this, that's when I go low, so I'm kind of getting something to anticipate. And then of course, we're still gonna finish off by changing my, my facing, going to the unicorn. So see from the side, keeping my dagger high to cover my head, and then turning quickly to make sure that I'm safe completely. Now, as a person on the receiving end of this, I want to imagine that I'm gonna do, my, my goal, if this was a real attack, is for me to step into it and thrust aside, just like our defense. But of course, we know that I don't really fully commit to something if I don't feel anything. So if I started coming here 
and I don't feel anything, that's my cue to cut up like I would do against a normal reversal to the leg. So, with the sword in one hand, I'm going back, and back here a little bit, I would go to face, and once that reversal comes, I would simply step back. And that would keep me safe here because I'm going here. I don't really have enough time or space to just cut. So it's going to make a little bit more sense for me to defend that actual attack and then come in. Especially since the dagger is right here. So sword on one hand I can afford to just do that because I don't have a secondary. Here, because I'm doing this, I need to be a little bit more cautious and make the actual defense and then follow up. Three and four, the ones we've looked at, are two Cumpera So for the agent, we beat us as a four to create some motion, make sure they're trying to catch up. We have option 1A, well, 1A1 and 1A2, <laughs> which is thrust, cut to the leg, step out of the way, or Beat, thrust, transition unicorn, use an invocato. Uh, against either one of those, as the patient, I just want to get out of there. If I haven't done the basic, which doesn't work as well in this card anyway, but because I don't have enough amount of time. So when I've done this, they've beaten my sword out of the way, and I'm coming back. So I'm doing this. Coming back, they do one of those two things. We're just gonna get out of there. We're gonna use a reverso to keep ourselves safe. Because the time is really, really tight, and my chances of hitting them at the same time is pretty small. So keep things safe for me. I've done this. Let's just get out of there, and that'll deal with either one of those actions, in Rakata or the Orange to the leg. So now next up, our final one is if they come with the second thrust. Meaning that as they have beat our sword, we're coming back, which opens up the, my, the middle here. So that could seem like a problem if it was just sword one hand, but because this is here, I'm going to trade, step around, and cut to the head. So we're back to our slip. So they've beat a sword to my left, we come out, step around, so clear to my outside, raise the sword, throw my overhand over, so. So I can use my right foot here or not initially, so I can do this, then go, or I can just stay in place and then use my left and right foot. I personally attempt to use my right foot first a little bit to kind of get their sword out of the way, but not too much because if I go too big, there's no way this is going to happen. So if I am going to use that, left, that right foot, it's just a small little bit, so I'm not opening myself up more than I can cover. Finally, we have Kurumoka Alta. We just looked at the first three here. Uh, these are our more complicated actions because there's a lot of uh, foot and hand work we don't really do on a regular basis. So the first thing we have here is we're going to kind of do these little short snapping cuts to their left hand. And so when we got them doing that, that's when we step around and thrust to the outside with a punta reversa. So we are snap, snap, they react in some way. We're gonna step around on the right foot. We don't wanna stand there, obviously, because that's not a great position. So we get out with a reversal. To the leg, to the head. Leg will be a bit safer and it'll be a bit more open as well. 
Second up, we have the mezzo to the dagger hand, followed by a reverse splitting blow. So again, we're attacking the dagger hand here. So I'm coming in and slicing to the throat. So see from the side, we are stepping in, keeping that bay, slicing the throat. Finally, we have the overhand thrust. This is identical to what we do with just normal hand, where we just step to their side and thrust. Or step to the side, thrust, get out. Function the same way here, just a little thicker because this is in the way. So one, two, and three. So that's what we covered last week in class. Uh, next video will be the next part. So how to defend against Kodilog Alta, then sword dagger, and then look at Kodilog Alta with sword by itself.